Hi, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, my name is Victoria Burke. I'm joined here by my co-worker Ingo Hinterding. We're both from the City Lab Berlin, which is a public innovation lab for the city. And we wanted to talk then today about our efforts within the city of Berlin to uh, connect the city government with the existing open source community in Berlin. So efforts to advance the topic of open source within the city government. I think it's wonderful that we had this opening keynote already from Laura on the topic of what's happening in the city of Munich. I think you'll see some similarities in what we're talking about, but then of course seeing uh, the unique challenges and approaches that we're utilizing here in Berlin to address these topics. Um, just to start out with, we wanted to get a feel for who is in the room. Um, so we have a couple questions we wanted to ask, just show of hands. First one's kind of a no-brainer. Um, question would be, how many of you use open source on a daily basis? Yeah, hands up, you're at the That's a no-brainer. Yeah, good job. <laughs> it's just a test. Um, second question, how many of you have developed or are developing open source software and maybe also contributing, so not just in an engineering role, but otherwise cultivating open source software? Definitely, yeah, mm -hmm. people present here. Have any of you ever developed open source software for or within a public administration? So in connection with a city. Cool. Oh, that's great. Okay, this is cool. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last question. Are any of you currently working in for a public administration? Yeah, yeah, some half hands. Okay. One. <laughs> I see those hands like yeah. on both of you. <laughs> Excellent. That just helps give us a feel for who's in the room and maybe also who we want to talk to later. Um, but so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Ingo and he's going to talk to you first a little bit about the lab and the work that we do there. Yes. Thank you, Tori. So who are we? What are we doing at the City Lab Berlin? We are, as Tori already mentioned, uh, an innovation lab for the city of Berlin and we help shape the digital transformation of the city. Uh, we are a non-profit organization. We are run by the Technologie Stiftung Berlin and we are funded by the Berlin Senate Chancellery. Uh, so uh, our audience is on our stakeholders are mainly um, public administration. And for everything we do, we use open source technologies Everything we publish is open source and uh, we use open data whenever possible to create our prototypes for the city. And what these prototypes are, I will mention on a later slide. And we follow the idea, it was mentioned before um, in a talk, um, public money, public uh, code. And actually we do quite a bit more than just that. So it's more like public money, public goods. We do events, uh, we uh, do service design, other services, uh, lots of communication stuff with uh, social media and so on. Everything we publish is open source, uh, transfer and trade run. And we do different formats like meetups and workshops. And uh, yeah, speaking of meetups, uh, I want to tease a meetup that is coming up. Actually our uh, fourth developers meetup is coming up. We are based in the former uh, uh, Tegel, no, Tempelhof Airport. <laughs> I make the mistake all the time. Um, so the City Lab is based there and we have a developers meetup every now and then. The next one is on April 18th uh, around the public, uh, uh, topic of um, open source for the um, city at public administration. So come there, have fun with us, uh, do some little coding uh, and it's a fun community gathering. So. Back to prototypes, what does that mean? We develop those open source digital prototypes with and for the city administrations and they greatly help with the later software procurement. You know, um, a, soft, uh, a prototype says more than a thousand words, we say. And so it's better than the descriptive word document of like 50 pages that describes the software. But if you can like really touch and feel a, a prototype that gives you an immediate idea of what this service should be that uh, should be created. And uh, very often the public administration approaches us in need of a new digital process, uh, digital service, a software. And uh, we usually start by standing, sending out our service design team. And uh, you can hear it, see it here actually in a Bürgeramt <laughs> uh, where we do something called user shadowing. So we go there and we observe for a day, take notes and really find out what is the issue, what is the challenge at hand. And then we hand it over to the prototyping team and we come up with possible solutions and we work very agile with our stakeholders on finding the right solutions and developing uh, a software 
in the end. Uh, right here, for example, you can see that's a prototype that we are actively uh, testing right now in one of the Bürgerämter in Berlin. And actually, this agile process it's natural for us as developers, but for the public administration, that doesn't come naturally. So it's really a bit of like uh, information sharing, transformation, how to work on software together with public ad administration as well. And I'm showing you three quick prototypes so that you have an idea what we do here. First one is the Berliner Haushaltsdaten. So Berlin has this budgetary data that it releases every two years. And this is actually the open data file. You can download it on the open data portal of Berlin. And it's an Excel file with like 46 lines of information. It's an amazing data set. You can find so much information in there, but it's kind of hard to actually dig in there and find the right information. So the Senatsverwaltung für Finanzen approached us and asked us, how can we make this accessible to the civic uh, uh, society here? and uh, show them all the expenses and the income and so on in a different way. So what we built here is this website where you have this tree navigation and you can really dig into the data and find out what all the spendings are. As for example here, um, I'm from Friedrichshain and uh, I have a son and he goes to elementary school. So he always complains about the bad food there. So I actually selected Friedrichshain and now I can dig in into the costs for schools and then I can dive in for the elementary schools and here I can scroll down and I actually find out that for Friedrichshain last year, 11.5 million euros have been spent on food. So must be better than my son claims it, <laughs> it is. So. <laughs> Hopefully. So that's one of the prototypes. Another prototype is Hilfe Berlin. That's actually a sneak peek. This hasn't been released yet. So I have to like do like uh, uh, Men in Black style and blitz dings you all afterwards. <laughs> Cannot tell you about it. But um, this is a website that helps people who are in in a psychological crisis. You know, many people have anxiety problems, depression problems, uh, problems with uh, abuse of drugs, sadness, loneliness. And we decided to, uh, in cooperation with, with the Zen VGPG, don't make me spell out the whole name of it, <laughs> um, to create a very low threshold offer that shows on a web page where you can easily navigate with the tags uh, the over 200 institutions that are available in Berlin. And here you can see that where you can select just by clicking on a tax that match your personal situation and it finds you the best uh, institutions that match your personal situation so that you get uh, help as quickly as possible. And you can navigate in, you can see, okay, where is it? You can get all the information about that institution. Uh, maybe you want to go there, maybe you want to visit the website, send an email or call them. You can see the opening hours. So a lot of like offering for people seeking help to use the channel that they like to see or that, that fits their needs the best. And this hasn't been there before. Like that was all information scattered all around. And the last one I want to uh, show you is Berlin Open Source and Berlin Open Source is the website that showcases open source projects that have been funded by the city administration and it's a curated list so you actually have to uh, send us the information about the repository for example and then we add it um, but here you can see it Obviously, it's lots of stuff that we do, but it's other stuff as well. And here you can get more information about the project. You can browse the re repository. You can go to the website, find more information about the project. Uh, in this case, it's, for example, the Weihnachtsmarktfinder, which is a, a project from Otis where you can find the best Weihnachtsmärkte near you, you the Christmas markets. And uh, yeah, you can check it out and then you can add your personal favorite Chrisit market around your kids and make this an even better project. So these are the kind of prototypes uh, that we do. And now I hand it over to the latest editor again.
Exactly. And so now, as a continuation of these open source efforts, we're trying to move into the new chapter of what we're working on here. And we uh, are in possession of the GitHub organization Berlin. So the domain github.com slash Berlin um, is something we have control of at the City Lab. And so we're currently uh, brainstorming and working on a concept for how we can make the best use of this landing page, because obviously that's a very noteworthy domain, and it is a great opportunity to kind of bundle a lot of the open source efforts ha happening in the city. Um, to kind of first recap what the status quo in the city government is, um, none of this I think is going to shock anyone in the room, but what uh, we tend to struggle with when it comes to open source in the city of Berlin is that uh, city employees sort of rarely consider open source solutions when they're trying to identify what is a new um, software or digital solution that we want to introduce into the city government. They tend to instead uh, defer back to known prior proprietary solutions, which of course then has the issues of uh, inflated uh, project costs and uh, the risks of vendor lock-in. We also see in the city government difficulty procuring and developing software in a modern, agile way. So that's not shocking. We've already talked today in the keynote, for example, about uh, strict hierarchies in uh, government contexts and difficulty then working in uh, an agile, iterative fashion instead of having always this notion that we need to plan everything out perfectly in advance and then we can execute it and then in the end we have one final product uh, and then skipping all of these steps in between, which then isn't very conducive to modern software development a lack of fundamental understanding of open source software and its potential in city government, so a lot of misconceptions um, about what open source software means, as we all heard some of those misconceptions, for example, in the talk on uh, developing countries and open source there, the you know, fears that it's inherently less secure or less safe to use or that otherwise um, it's uh, too challenging for the city to do on its own because then they need their own developer capacity to implement that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we see in city government a lack of knowledge about what open source software is maybe already being deployed in city context, so then the opportunity to not reinvent the wheel and instead take something that's already been used and customized for the context of Berlin and then uh, maybe potentially being able to reuse that in other contexts. But if you have no idea that software is maybe already being used in other areas of government, then you don't know that you have this opportunity to save uh, effort and build on what's already happening. So we kind of see these as... Uh, um, emblematic of the status quo, and then they boil down in our eyes to two main challenges. The first would be empowering government. So how can we empower the people that are working for the city government in Berlin to uh, have the skills and the knowledge to confidently procure uh, open source solutions. So to say, I want to seek out an open source solution, I know how to write um, uh, the um, necessary documents for the procurement process so that I can accurately, uh, you know, I can get offers that sort of match my expectation. And of course, then how can they also manage the development process of this uh, open source software in an agile and modern way? And then the second main challenge we've identified is engaging the community because open source software lives through the community, through people that are um, able to develop uh, the software initially and develop it further and take feature requests and keep these uh, uh, projects alive. And so with these two main challenges, we see that then feeding directly into our ideas for what this github.com slash Berlin organization page could be. We envision it as a launch pad for an open ecosystem in which open source developers help us develop our projects and our ideas further, um, where there are, through this platform, regular opportunities for open source developers to work directly with the city government on open source projects so that they can access this page and see where's an opportunity for me to get involved, either on a volunteer basis or also on a paid basis. Um, and also that through this as a central location that city employees have an easier find seeing an easier time seeing what open source software is already being used or what um, software has maybe already been developed for the city and then where there's an opportunity to reuse source code rather than having to start from scratch. Um, and so then concretely what that could be, um, a central hub for um, open source products that have been developed by and for the city of Berlin so this, that the source code is hosted there, as well as a source of information. So we also see this as uh, being a location where the city officials could go and access information starting at the basics. What is open source? Why should I, as someone in the city, be interested in open source? Or also, if uh, they are working on a project where 
publishing source code uh, is part of the project that they can really understand step by step how to do that. Because we've also already experienced in city government, sometimes there is interest in open source, but at the point at which we say, okay, then great, uh, feel free to publish your code to GitHub, then they sort of uh, you know, get sweaty and nervous and don't really know what that means and wonder, okay, but does that mean that everybody can touch the source code and change it without any uh, oversight whatsoever? So we see that there's uh, still some misconceptions that need to be cleared up, even at a point which the, where the employees are interested and willing to go along with it. So we see um, this as a resource or as a page that can sort of serve these dual functions. Um, we cited here specifically the city of Amsterdam as a source of inspiration for us. They already have an active GitHub page where, or rather an organizational page where they uh, publish uh, diverse source codes for their projects, but also where they have informational materials kind of in this vein. Um, but of course, again, this morning, the keynote, we also saw the city of Munich would be another example out of Germany where uh, a city is trying to cultivate a GitHub page in this direction. Concretely, we talked about the, the uh, Haushaltsdaten project, so this budgetary data for the city of Berlin. That's uh, currently a repository that's hosted on this uh, GitHub organizational page. And so we have a dream that, for example, a project like this, that uh, open source developers from the community would work with us to develop this further, that um, they would help us identify bugs in this project, that they maybe would submit feature requests, or maybe even then go as far as um, submitting their own pull requests and suggesting actual improvements to the source code. That would sort of be our dream scenario scenario that um, there's a vibrant community uh, and group of people actively contributing to these projects. And then, of course, that the city government is directly interacting with these individuals and having an opportunity to take this input, process it, maybe ask follow-up questions, or maybe then actually integrate it into the finished product. This then brings us to a point where we actually would like to talk with you. So we're now flipping the Q&A on its head and we're going to ask you all a question as people who are presumably part or who would identify as part of an open source community. This element of trying to get then the developers involved in this process. Like we have a pretty good connection to the city government, but I wouldn't say that we've done a great job thus far of engaging directly with the open source community and getting uh, people outside the city government interested in these topics. And so our question would effectively be, you as part of the open source community, what would you need to consider being involved in projects like these? Is it a question of money? Is it just a question that you would maybe be interested if you can be compensated for your work, but you wouldn't be interested in doing volunteer work? Or is it a question of the type of project? Would you say that if uh, you're really interested in working on projects with the city government that maybe you have a personal connection to where you could see the value for the city as a whole, but other types of projects would be less interesting for you? Our question then would be basically under what circumstances or under what conditions could you imagine working for a city government or working with a city government government on open source projects, or if you think you wouldn't consider that whatsoever, if maybe you've had bad experiences in the past, that would also interest us to know uh, what hasn't worked. So maybe at this point, I would take a break. I don't know if there's already a mic, but if somebody has some input, some thoughts on this question, we would love to hear from you. I already see a hand way in the back. Yeah, great. Yes, so for me to do it, it can't be in German. Yeah. So if it's in English or Swedish, mm -hmm. it's fine. Uh, but otherwise, is there any specific type of project or nature of the work? Anything, you're down. Hi, um, I'm not sure about Germany, but I come from South America. And mm -hmm. there, the main issue is dealing with um, changes in the public administration. So the main question when I see this question is, how do you ensure the longevity and the continuity of the project? So you would like to see those questions kind of answered in advance before you get too heavily involved in a project or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also came up in the, in the earlier presentation from the Munich municipality, that, that element of um, administration having a certain stigma, right, of mm -hmm. being like maybe a little bit slower, a little bit more old school when it comes to the development approaches and stuff like that. So if I would want to get involved, I would want to know, okay, is there a niche where, you know, there is that, like that positive energy to try something new? Because if it's not, then maybe I wouldn't want to spend my energy to convince everybody mm -hmm. that there is a better way to do it, right? So I would, I think me personally, I would need to see there's already a little bit something that mm. goes into a slightly different direction. So yeah, you want to see the, the government showing their commitment and their uh, sincere interest in actually working? Or, yeah. 
It was also uh, one, one key question for me to decide to work in an open source uh, project is the governance model. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is going to decide the roadmap of this software? Uh, who is going to decide if I propose uh, a new feature uh, to accept it or to reject it? And um, what is going to be the... Um, the role of the community members in that governance. Mm -hmm. So that's for me a, a key question to understand, and I also want to, to ask you, uh, <laughs> how do you do it in your in your projects? It's a good question. I don't know if you want to answer, Ingo, in terms of, like, so in this direction of, like, already the open source projects we have, how do we manage contributions, decide what gets added, or do you want to answer that? Maybe? Yeah, it's usually a mix. Like, we identify, as I showed earlier with the service design team, we identify the needs and the problems, and then we come up with possible solutions. And in the ideal scenario, which is for us the more often scenario, because we are an innovation lab, we are outside of the city administration, right? We are not part of the city administration. So we can afford to be agile and to decide on the project that we see relevant enough to pursue. So we can kind of like keep the ball rolling all the time because we are from outside and we can say like, hey, if you want to have the software and us working with you, then we need you to be available for the next three months on a, let's say, weekly schedule for Geofix where they are really like, and this is really new to them because they usually, they see software procurement as a on, a on a project, not on a product basis. So they, they have a budget and they have a timeline. They say like, all right, we have 500,000 euros to spend till the end of 2026. And then they have meetings over meetings over meetings. And at the end, you have this waterfall uh, requirements document that they shelf out and then they wait for the software to arrive and this is not how it works nowadays so we teach them how to be agile and that they can have actually if they work with us or if they work with open source developers they can have even better solutions than the solutions that they had in mind earlier and cheaper but it's a, it's a it's an uphill battle to really make them understand all the benefits of like how we work there um, uh, well, uh, I'm Pau from, from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, well, f for me, uh, the, the, there is a way to work as an, as an open source. So as, as Neil, for example, said, all, all these kinds of, of things are very important. But for me, it's, it's, it's inherent to the, to, the, to, the, to the workflow when, when you're in the open source. So just to address the, the elephant in the room, I think it's a money problem um, also. No? Because sometimes we see like open source, it's only like an activist thing, and, and of course it's an activist, but in the other way, you have to fill the fridge and you have to rent the, the, the house. So I would say, for example, in my case, we have a, a company that is only based uh, working on open source projects. So if we don't have money to, money to, 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 to have it, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to, to work in open source projects and also in the, in, a city, in the city level. I mean, if you want to do like big things, um, you can not only depend on activists because most of these activists maybe have another job that is very well paid and this kind of, this kind of things, for example. You know, we can't build this community solely on the back of volunteer work, that there really has to be money flowing to these projects, absolutely. So we have one more comment or question there in the back. Thank you. Um, I think digital infrastructure um, is kind or is actually infrastructure. And I think we need or we should have um, a lot lower barrier um, and building software, debugging software, designing software, making concepts, all that is not something for the elite. It is something for everybody. And when you think of streets, so the street, of course, it's really complex to plan streets, to build streets. But when I walk along the street and there is some dirt, then I can't pick it up. Or if there's something, because I'm on the surface on the street, and as more I'm getting involved in doing something with the streets in my neighborhood, 
I don't know, making making something with kids and and doing some pictures on it, and then having some problems with the cars there. I'm getting more involved into it, and I think the GitHub dot com slash Berlin should have all the software projects where I'm as a Berliner in contact with. Mm -hmm. So things mm -hmm. like the web page Berlin.de should have a copy there. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, booking systems and all that. That there is a surface for me for the digital infrastructure. And on top of that, then we can talk about processes like how to do PR requests mm -hmm. or how to document. But, but giving a Berliner citizen, a surface for the digital infrastructure where they can read and maybe interact with, the, with that uh, would be a vision which came into my mind mm -hmm. uh, to your question. Thank you. That's also a great contribution. And it really speaks to the heart, I think, of the way we like to work at the mm -hmm. lab is keeping citizens in the focus at the end of the day. It's uh, not just about helping the city government be more digital, but be more digital for the sake of the citizens and for the sake of their products for the citizen. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll take two more and um, I think one there and one there um, because then we have to do the lunch break so yeah. if you want to <laughs> sorry if you guys are really hungry just two more <laughs> so thank you uh, maybe also a question um, do you see any risk if the political lead of Berlin will change so we have legislation periods and you have to um, yeah, c c convince the, the leads of, of the city administration. That might also influence and be a risk for developers to put, put mm -hmm. in some efforts and after four years it will cancel again. How would you answer to this? Yeah, that's a very good question. I don't, do you want to take that? or I'm yeah. happy if you answer yeah. that. I mean, that's just it. You know, so as someone you know, funded by the city government, I think we're hesitant to mix too much into politics or uh, as well uh, too much prognosticating because at the end of the day, we don't really know uh, that much what changes in city government mean for our organization as a whole, let alone for our open source work. My general instinct would be that open source as a, as a topic, as in a focal point that for the city is not going away. I think regardless of how the city leadership changes, I think in this day and age, it's very hard to pretend that open source doesn't matter or that it's something that's not relevant for a modern city. So I would not be scared that the focus would turn away from open source projects, but if, like or open source as a, as, a, as a topic area in general. But I think there's a valid concern of maybe specific projects might suddenly be deprioritized. I'm not sure then that we really have a great answer there other than um, as long as we exist, we'll obviously fight for our projects. And if uh, we can especially like thread this needle, uh, the connection to the citizens, I think also then it's much harder to wave away certain projects if it's very clear that there was a benefit here for citizens that we uh, created uh, a level of exchange and interest with citizens that wasn't there before. I think that would also then make it harder uh, for certain projects to uh, be waved away. So I think our focus there would then be just making sure that our projects are so relevant that it's hard for the city to move away from them, but we couldn't guarantee it. Was there one more? Okay, one more. Yeah, thank you for the interesting talk and thank you for your work, actually. As a Berliner, I very often experience the public administration as heavily overloaded, as heavily overburdened. So how do you manage to get your project? And very often people think it's all just another project, just another task on top. How do you manage that in Berlin? So the question was, sorry, it was getting a bit loud, so just repeat to understand it right. How do we deal with uh, public administration being overburdened with uh, their workload? Okay. Uh, we have, it, it's not our main focus point, obviously, because we deal with different, but we, uh, we see them as colleagues that we interact with on a daily basis, and we realize that the situation is just as you described, and that we cannot be like the, the new hip, people who come in and say like, hey, now we change everything, like, like a consulting agency. But the first thing is always to be sitting there and say, hey, we are here to listen first and foremost. And that usually helps a lot to open up the minds and the brains because sometimes they just want to get their frustration off their chest before they are able to look into the future and think without ideas how to make that situation better and how we as a city lab can support them on that journey. Yeah, so that means we don't always get to work as quickly as we'd like to. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we have to really take the time for us to build up that trust and that relationship and play therapist a little bit. Uh, and then we can slowly move into like a, um, 
more productive uh, cooperation. But yes, like what you bring up is totally relevant. Um, so I know we have to close out. Oh, we're already on the slide. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to close it. Can you go <laughs> no back? No worries. <laughs> You were one step ahead of me. So then just quick blurb, we are hiring. If any of this sounded interesting <laughs> to you and you think you might like to join our team, we um, have some positions open and we also always accept um, unsolicited applications. So even if we don't have something listed and you think it speaks to you, send your application in any way. And as previously mentioned, we have the developers meetup coming up on April 18th. You'll see more information soon on our website. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. Otherwise, approach <laughs> us after this talk. We'd love to chat with more with you. Thank you Thank so much. You